Good evening. Here are tonight's top stories. A Bardica businessman faces charges for unlawful possession of a firearm and ammunition. Meanwhile, at the Georgetown Seawall area, taxi drivers are allegedly shot by a vendor. In court news, a 21 year old granted bail and probation after facing robbery under arms charges. Additionally, a cook receives a one year jail term and fine for illegal narcotics possession. Suspicions arise as a security guard is implicated in the theft of solar panels from a Bardica school. Plus, social activist Mark Benshop files a $100 million Guyana dollars lawsuit against social media commentator Guyanese critics for defamation. And, health minister reports dengue-related deaths and surge in cases in Guyana. Stay tuned for updates. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Bardica businessman faces charges for unlawful possession of firearm and ammunition. Ray Anthony Persaud, a 28-year-old businessman residing at Lot 14, 4th Avenue, Bardica Town, Essequibo River, Region 7, found himself in legal trouble as he was charged with offenses related to the unlawful possession of a firearm and ammunition. According to authorities, Persaud was charged with unlawful possession of a firearm without license and unlawful possession of ammunition without license, both of which contravene Section 16, 2, A, of the Firearms Act, Chapter 1605. The Bardica businessman appeared before Magistrate His Worship, Mr. Tarek Mohammed, at the Bardica Town Magistrate's Court earlier today, Tuesday, April 23, 2024. During the court proceedings, the charges were formally presented to Persaud, who entered pleas of a not guilty of for both offenses. In light of the charges, Persaud was remanded to prison pending further legal proceedings. The matter has been adjourned to May 14, 2024, marking the next stage in the legal process where Persaud will have the opportunity to present his defense. The case underscores the seriousness with which the legal system views offenses related to firearm possession and serves as a reminder of the legal consequences individuals may face for violating firearms laws. As the legal proceedings unfold, it will be crucial to ensure a fair and transparent process to determine the outcome of the charges against Persaud. Taxi drivers shot allegedly by vendor at Georgetown Seawall area. Last Wednesday, an altercation at the Kitty Seawall area in Georgetown resulted in two taxi drivers sustaining gunshot wounds, reportedly inflicted by a vendor. The victims, identified as Jermaine Duncan, 32, from Sophia, and Sheldon Smith, 34, from Durban Street Lodge, were both injured during the incident. According to reports from police headquarters, Smith was celebrating his birthday with friends at the seawall when the vendor approached the group to speak with his girlfriend, who was among the birthday party attendees. After a brief interaction, the vendor left with the woman. Later that night, around 11.30 p.m., the vendor returned to the seawall on a motorcycle and engaged in an argument with Smith. Allegedly, the suspect produced a handgun from his waist and fired several shots, striking Smith in the upper left thigh. Duncan, who was standing nearby, was also shot once in the upper left abdomen. Both victims were rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital for medical treatment. Smith has since been discharged, while Duncan remains hospitalized, although his condition is reported to be stable. Following the shooting, detectives processed the scene and discovered six spent 9mm shells. The evidence was collected, marked, sealed, and forwarded to the Criminal Investigation Department CID, headquarters for further examination. As of now, the suspect remains at large, but investigations into the incident are ongoing. Law enforcement authorities are actively pursuing leads to apprehend the individual responsible for the shooting. Georgetown Court Grants Bail and Probation to 21-Year-Old Facing Robbery Under Arms Charge In a recent court appearance before Senior Magistrate Clive Nurse at the Georgetown Magistrates Court, a 21-year-old resident of South Road, Lacey Town, Georgetown, was granted bail and placed on probation while facing a charge of robbery under arms. Identified as Randy Smart, the defendant appeared in court to answer allegations stemming from an incident on March 20, 2024, on Durban Street, Work and Rust, Georgetown. 
It is alleged that Smart, armed with a dangerous weapon, robbed Margaret Walter of a gold chain valued at $150,000 GYD and $60,000 Guyana dollars. During the proceedings, Smart, represented by attorney Samuel Glasgow, pleaded not guilty to the charge. Glasgow raised concerns regarding potential racial bias as a motive for his client's arrest, citing previous encounters with the law where Smart was ultimately cleared of similar accusations. However, the prosecution revealed that Smart had previously faced charges of robbery under arms on August 11, 2023, and again on March 29, 2024. Despite the prosecution's arguments, magistrate nurse granted Smart bail in the amount of $150,000 and placed him on probation. As part of the probation terms, Smart is required to report weekly to the Brickdam Police Station. The court's decision highlights the legal complexities surrounding the case and the judicial system's approach to balancing the presumption of innocence with concerns about public safety and previous criminal history. As the case progresses, further deliberations will likely shed light on the evidence and circumstances surrounding the alleged offense. Cook receives one-year jail term and fined for illegal narcotics poetion. Dexter Griffith, a 54-year-old cook residing at Lot 40, 5 Lane Force, Demerara River, found himself facing legal consequences for the illegal possession of narcotics. Griffith was arrested on June 21, 2023, at the 70 km police checkpoint for being in possession of 199 grams of marijuana. Following his arrest, Griffith appeared before Magistrate Her Worship, Madam Crystal Lambert at the Bardica Town Magistrate's Court on June 23, 2023. At that time, he pleaded not guilty to the charge of illegal possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking and was granted bail in the sum of 100,000 Guyanese dollars. The trial was initially set for March 11, 2024, but was subsequently postponed to April 22, 2024. On Monday, April 22, 2024, Griffith returned to the Bardica Town Magistrate's Court, this time appearing before Magistrate His Worship, Mr. Tariq Mohammed. After considering the evidence presented, Magistrate Mohammed found Griffith guilty as charged. Griffith was sentenced to one year of imprisonment for his offense. Additionally, he was ordered to pay a fine of 30,000 Guyanese dollars. The verdict highlights the seriousness with which the legal system addresses drug-related offenses and serves as a reminder of the legal repercussions individuals may face for involvement in narcotics-related activities. As Griffith begins his sentence, it underscores the importance of adherence to laws governing narcotics possession and trafficking. The case also underscores the role of the judicial system in upholding law and order within communities and deterring illegal activities. Security guards suspected in theft of solar panels from Bardica School Authorities in Bardica are investigating a case involving the theft of four solar panels from the Two Miles Primary School, with a 27-year-old security guard emerging as the main suspect. According to reports from police headquarters, the theft occurred between Friday, April 19, and Monday, April 22, 2024. The security guard, purportedly admitting to the crime, was subsequently taken into custody. Additionally, a local businessman, in whose possession some of the stolen items were found, was also arrested and is currently in police custody. The stolen solar panels, identified as Mara Solar brand, are estimated to be valued at $260,000. The incident came to light when Melanie Gardner, the school's canteen manager, noticed the panels missing while cleaning the area where they were stored. Upon discovery, Gardner promptly informed the school's head teacher, who then reported the matter to law enforcement authorities. Following up on leads, the police visited the residence of a Bardica businessman, who provided valuable information regarding the case. Subsequently, the suspect was contacted and questioned, leading to his admission of involvement in the theft. Further investigation led to the recovery of two stolen panels stored in a vehicle belonging to the businessman. Additionally, two more panels were retrieved from the roof of the businessman's building at his direction. Both the suspect and the businessman were formally informed of the offense, cautioned, and subsequently arrested and placed into custody as investigations continue. The incident underscores the importance of vigilant monitoring and security measures in safeguarding public property. 
Authorities are committed to ensuring that those responsible for the theft are brought to justice, and investigations into the matter are ongoing. Social activist Mark Benshop files $100 million Guyana dollars lawsuit against social media commentator Guyanese critics for defamation. In a recent development, Mark Benshop, a prominent social activist and managing director of Benshop Radio 107.1 FM, has taken legal action against social media commentator and government contractor Mikhail Rodriguez, widely known as the Guyanese critic. Ben Shop has filed a lawsuit amounting to $100 million, alleging defamation against him. According to court documents obtained by Nightly News, Ben Shop claims that Rodriguez made defamatory statements against him on January 23, 2024, through his Facebook social media platform. The statements in question allegedly accused Ben Shop of leading black individuals, specifically African Guyanese, to their deaths within the premises of the president's office. Rodriguez purportedly suggested that Ben Shop deserved a life sentence in prison for his actions, insinuating that former President Jagdeo had pardoned him. Ben Shop, represented by his attorney senior counsel Roysdale Ford, asserts in the court documents that Rodriguez's statements have severely damaged his personal and professional reputation. The lawsuit outlines six key conclusions that readers of Rodriguez's statements may infer, including Ben Shop's alleged responsibility for the deaths of African Guyanese, his purported criminality, and unsuitability for society. In response to the allegations, Ben Shop aims to hold Rodriguez accountable for the irreparable harm caused to his reputation. The lawsuit underscores the seriousness with which Ben Shop regards the defamation, emphasizing the impact it has had on his standing within the community and his professional endeavors. This legal action marks a significant step in Ben Shop's efforts to seek justice and restore his reputation in the face of what he perceives as damaging and unfounded accusations. As the case unfolds, it will likely draw attention to the complexities surrounding free speech, social media influence, and the legal boundaries of expression in the digital age. Health Minister reports dengue-related deaths and surge in cases in Guyana. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony disclosed on Tuesday that two individuals in Guyana have succumbed to dengue fever this year, with an alarming total of 2,852 reported cases of infection thus far. Among those infected, 265 required hospitalization, highlighting the severity of the situation. Dr. Anthony's update follows concerns raised about the prevalence of dengue in Guyana, particularly in light of recent fatalities. Preliminary findings suggest that siblings Vishnu Mohabir and Ariana Mohabir from Burbis may have died from complications related to dengue fever. The health ministry has observed a surge in dengue cases and has implemented various measures to address the situation, including intensified fogging campaigns. Despite these efforts, the disease remains a significant public health challenge. Based on over 11,200 tests conducted, the majority of dengue cases are concentrated in regions 1, 2, 4, 6, 9, and 10. However, Dr. Anthony did not specify the regions from which the deceased individuals originated. Dr. Anthony noted a decline in cases for the current week, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the concerning statistics. Last year, Guyana also grappled with a surge in dengue cases, with reports of 11 dengue-related deaths by August. Tragically, at least six of the deceased were children. Dengue, transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, manifests through symptoms such as high fever, body aches, and nausea. The World Health Organization WHO, has linked the increase in dengue infections to global warming, Rising temperatures create conducive environments for the breeding of mosquitoes, exacerbating the spread of the disease. The situation underscores the urgent need for comprehensive measures to combat both dengue fever and the underlying environmental factors driving its transmission, 